over 10,000 hauntings in the UK. It's killed me. <gasps> Dark, horrific secrets await you at the Ostrich Inn. That is very spooky. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Most Haunted. Now we've come to the village of Colnebrook in Berkshire, which is right next to Heathrow. But it's home to the third oldest pub in Great Britain. Now the Ostrich Inn has the look and feel of a typical English village pub. But behind its quaint doors, apparently over 60 people met their deaths there hundreds of years ago in the most bizarre way. Now, some people say it's haunted. Some say it's pure fabrication, which is a good marketing ploy. But to find out the truth, most haunted are going to spend 24 hours here. The inn dates back to 1103, and it's said in the 14th century an evil landlord called Jarman committed gruesome murders. His victims were weary travelers in need of refreshment and a bed for the night. Little did they know it would be their last stopover. Lots of people have reported strange occurrences, not just the people who work here, but by the people who drink here as well. In fact, some staff members are so scared they won't even go into certain rooms after dark. So is the Ostrich Inn haunted, or is it just people's imagination running wild? Well, that's what the Most Haunted team are here to find out. Now, the people who are spending the night here are Martin on sound. Hi, Martin. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Rick, one of our cameramen, are you OK? Looking forward to tonight? Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Not scared at all then, Ian? Oh, no. Not you never are, are you? Then we've got Bev, our director. Bev, how do you feel about the ostrich inn? Excited. Do you feel a bit spooked, Carl, our producer? I've always spooked. I know you are. And, of course, oh, the gorgeous Mark on Steadicam. Now, apart from our lovely crew, we also need a little bit of expert help. And to do that, we've got our psychic medium, Derek Akora. Now, he is on his way, but he has no idea about the location or where he's coming to or the history. So he's been driven around the countryside until we say we're ready for him. Another member of our team, of course, is parapsychologist Jason Carl. Now, Jason, you as a parapsychologist, if you're going to catch any paranormal activity, you're going to look for hard evidence, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. How do you do that? Well, particularly here at the Ostrich, we're going to be using an electromagnetic field tester. This basically is registering the natural electromagnetic field, and if the natural field is disturbed, which is linked to ghost sightings and paranormal activity, allegedly, then this will tell me that with the sound. So we'll be looking for that. We're also going to use this, um, basically it's a thermal gun, and that looks for cold spots, unusual fluctuations in temperature. Which is quite common, isn't it? I've heard of that before. Well, it's, li <laughs> it's linked to alleged ghost sightings, okay. yeah, yeah. What are you expecting to pick up tonight? Well, I'm expecting to pick up absolutely nothing, but what I will be looking for is evidence that I can catch on the scientific equipment, which I can then say this is either a natural phenomenon or it's something I can't explain. We'll be looking for fluctuations. Now, Sam and Daniel, the landlord and landlady here, I mean, I find it interesting and unbelievable that you actually want to live here. What, what's the actual story behind the murders? Well, it relates back to um, a gentleman called Jarman, who was a landlord in the 14th century time. Um, and the story relates that he had a room upstairs called the Blue Room, and he used to put his rich guests in there to sleep. And when they were asleep, he used to pull a lever and they used to fall down the floor into a pot of boiling oil. And it, it, it's said that he killed 70 people. And you're all right with that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you learn to live with it after a while. <laughs> is there any one particular room that you don't like being in? After dark? Well, the blue room upstairs is a bit, a bit daunting at night time, um, especially when we can't get the electrics working in there. It, gets, right. it starts flickering and making noise. Really? So, so it's a bit of a nightmare. What about yourselves? Do you believe in, in ghosts? I'm not um, a great believer. I very much believe in what I see. 
I hear a lot of things, but it could be anything explained. Um, until I actually see something myself, then I'm a bit in two minds over it. But I'm assured by all the staff that something is going on. And all so. the staff believe that there's something by all means, Almost every one of our staffs had some kind of incident through their time here. When I first started here, there was two couples before me that left within a month. When I started here, there was another part-time girl that left. And then we got two other deputy managers that left. I mean, we've had loads in the last three years that just can't deal with the building. It was one time in the restaurant when we were just setting up. I think I was setting up for a Christmas party. My mate came up, tried to scare me. I didn't really care because, I mean, I knew about everything by that time. So I just had a laugh with him. But then about two minutes after he'd gone, all the shutters started banging. They just divide the two rooms up. They're big. Wooden shutters, they're quite heavy. And I thought it was him, of course, so I, I just started swearing and I was going mad, really, and I went running straight into the Jacobean, which is the room next to it, and then he wasn't there, so I thought he'd just done a runner downstairs, so I went running after him, and in the end I found out he was in the office. There's no way he could have ran that fast to actually do it like that. That busy road out there used to be the main route from London to Bath. Now, if you're a wealthy traveller, you literally took your life in your own hands. You had highwaymen to contend with and unsavoury landlord and landladies like the Jarmans, and they'd think nothing of killing you for your money. And it all happened in here. Now then, the bed would be positioned here, and the victim would sleep with the head at the top, obviously feet at the bottom. Then once Jarman was aware that the victim was asleep by peeping through the door, he would then go to another part of the inn and turn a lever. That would then tilt the bed and the victim would slide down the bed into a trap door, which actually is here. Now then, you can't see the real trap door, but it's been covered up with concrete and the boilers are sitting on top of them. Most gruesomely, the bodies would end up here, into a big, deep vat of boiling oil. And uh, you'll never guess what's here now, the deep fat fry. It's funny how history repeats itself. Now, there's one last room I want to show you, and that's the pantry. Ah, right. This is supposed to be the most haunted room in the inn. Apparently, members of the staff refuse to come in this particular room after dark because it's full of spirits. <laughs> Not this kind of spirits, ghostly spirits. But this, supposedly, according to the story, Jarman put all the bodies in here. And I have to say, it doesn't smell particularly nice and it's very, very cold. Now, what we've also done is we're going to put one of these mini cams up here and we're going to let it run throughout the night just in case we happen to pick anything up. Now, I happen to know that Derek's arrived, so I'm going to go and meet him. haunted team complete, will we find a night at the Ostrich Inn too scary? And will Derek pick up on the gruesome murders? Over dinner, we had a chance to relax and discuss our favourite subject, ghosts. Now, everybody knows the word ghost. What exactly does the word ghost mean? I mean, everybody imagines them to be sort of the, the ghoul in the, oh, with a white sheet or the grey <laughs> lady. I mean, can you explain it? Well, the fact there are many forms of, you know, so-called sightings of ghosts. Um, you know, a, a big percentage of sightings, um, I believe, um, is all linked in with what we call residual energy. But not all of them, because there's basically two different kinds of ghosts. There's what Derek's describing as residual, which is basically where ghosts seem to be oblivious of living people. And the other type, which are ghosts that seem to interact, such as the spirits that you yeah. supposedly connect with. This is why I personally classify the ghost apparition different to spirit mm. return. Two different things. Because they're totally miles apart. Mm. It was all well and good talking about them, but it was time to start looking for the ghosts of Ostrich Inn. Okay, Derek, Jason, 
Let's start off in this room. Okay. Are you picking anything up at all? Well, it's most certainly um, not overactive at this point. Um, there's a little ah. bit of a uh, little bit of resid. Okay, this lady with me. She's. I, I feel as if I'm just engulfed in this beautiful uh, long dress um, with her. The purple, the grey, and the um, cream. Um, I call it lattice work of material. And she said, "Walk." She heads for those stairs. Her stairs are, these stairs are so strong with her it's and moving. her movements. It's I'm not saying it's following Derek, but it has moved. <laughs> Where do you want to go, Derek? Uh, maybe go up? Yeah, can we go up? Please. The right. electromagnetic fields tester that we have has picked something up here, and it seemed that Derek was picking up something at the same time. That's quite interesting, because earlier on testing the room, there wasn't the same electromagnetic fluctuation that we have there. He also picked up a lady in a big dress, which there is a story of an alleged apparition that's been seen quite near to where we are of a lady in a long dress, possibly Victorian. OK, we'll just come through th this way, Evie, yeah. just, because I feel as if I'm drawn um, very, very, very strongly here. The Victorian lady that Derek picked up downstairs seemed to be a friendly soul, but upstairs Derek appeared apprehensive as we entered the blue room. Here. Yes, there's a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm taken back in mind here. Oh, oh, the agonies and the cries of mercy. Oh, the evil. Who What's are his evil? name? This is Charman. This is Charman. Who are you? Who are you? I'm oh, Thomas Cole. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Oh, oh, I feel it really yes. cold. There is a cold spot around you. OK, leave it now. Leave us alone. It's You've gone down. Off. It's now gone down to 16 degrees oh. around a vet, which isn't, isn't very normal because the stone should maintain. No, it's here. Maintain. Yeah, it's, yes. here. it's around you. The, st the stone should be the same or roughly the same temperature all along. <sighs> That's quite unusual. No, the cold spot's actually gone now, completely gone. Why do you describe them as evil? They are murderers. They killed a lot of people, but not here. Why out, Sam? Why not here? There's a trap. There was a trap, but this has changed. This is not the way it should be. They come through this door for the sleep. They didn't go out of that door. Sam, can you show me where? Yes, it's ground. It's on the ground. Should we go down to the ground floor? Yes. Right, this is where I think we need to turn the lights off. As we know, we're more likely to encourage any paranormal activity with the lights off, so it was time to switch to night vision. Following you then, Derek. OK. This character's trying to play hide-and-seek. But I've come here, that's better, Sam. Ah. Derek. Breathe, Derek. <sighs> Down. That charm. That charm, man. He's killing me. Who are you? I'm James Henry. Henry. James Henry. Look at it. She. She's taken my money. That woman. Who's taking your money? His wife. She's hidden it. What are you doing with my money? What's she doing with it? She's put it in that chest. Under the stairs. The stairs that are hidden. <laughs> Do you know who we are? Huh? <laughs> 
He's walking around with that smirk on his face. Who is? Jarman. How do we get him to, to come out? I don't, I'm He'll wrong. come out when it suits him. Oh, God. You have to let him. You need to let him go through. Why? Why do I need to let him go through? Because in its mediums, if they're taken out of a trance, if they're able to come out, it can actually hurt them, allegedly. I know, but he's going through pain. He... I can't see him go through. Derek. Take you to the door, did you say? The pantry. pantry. Do you want to go to the pantry? Yes. Come on, then, we'll Stand take up. you. Come on. We'll take you to the pantry. There, come with us. Come on. Derek, can you hear me? Oh, my, 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 my. Your legs, legs okay? Yeah. You're all right. I'm okay, yeah, I'm fine. You're all right? Yeah, I got. This was the first time any member of the crew had witnessed a medium go into such an intense trance. It had made us all a bit jumpy. This here is a, um, a hidey hole his woman brought the stolen items that belong to these poor souls. <gasps> Deserve to be executed. Oh my god. Oh my god. We, we all stood and applauded. Who are you talking about? Jarman. Can we talk to Jarman? I want to speak to him. I want to speak to him. Where shall I look? Call me, mate. OK, come on. The thought of being confronted by the evil spirit of the landlord, Jarman, was frightening, to say the least, and it looked like we were heading for the loft. Where do you want to go? He comes here. He comes here. Who does, Jarman? Yes. Shall we go up there? It's, it's all right for one person to go up there, not all of us. The book. The book is here. The book's up there, Jason. The book is up there. What book? What book? What book is it? Tell me. History. History book. A history book. With no light and ancient rotting beams, I decided it was too dangerous for Jason to venture further. So we sent our producer, Carl, to search for Jarman and any eminence of the elusive book. It's a very old part of the building. The rafters here are... They're next to nothing, as you can see. These are literally just... Could be covered. I'm not having any luck with this book, guys. Okay. I love it when I get cobwebs on my face in a haunted house. Did somebody just move up here at all? Oh. Is, some, is someone else moving up here? I just need to know if anyone else has been up here or thrown anything up. No, no one's come up. Right. I've um, been down and that's it. No one else has gone up. I've just had a, a, a major shuff... A sort of... Uh, it was like a, a, a shuffling sound, like something had been thrown. I'm out hearing noises upstairs, guys. Right, hang on. Um... Yeah, can you just shine that, shine that torch so I know you're out over there because it's getting a bit airy up here? Oh, s***. <laughs> Please be nice. Right, I'm, I'm coming down there. I'm... Can you see all right? Yeah. What's it up, man? There was a, like a shuffling noise. It was really close to me, but that was when you had the torch on. The first noise I heard was like somebody throwing... That's why I asked if anyone had thrown yeah. anything up or... No, nobody was moved. near. Nobody's been near. Um, it was like somebody just a thud. Yeah. I'm gonna look at the tape because we might actually yeah. catch it on there. I've got sort of like, you know, some torch. So. Yeah. 
It was only after looking back at the tape did we see an object moving on its own at the bottom centre of the screen, which created one of the noises that Carl heard. But what that object is, we just don't know. We couldn't find the book, and without tearing up the floor and walls, there was no more we could do to find the one piece of evidence that would answer all the questions about Jarman and the murders. That is very spooky in there. I was interested to watch Derek last night. He certainly managed to find out a lot of information that I don't think he had any knowledge of beforehand. We removed all evidence of the history of the pub and he didn't know where he was being brought. There are over 10,000 hauntings recorded in the UK at the moment. And the only way he could have possibly known anything about this one was if he had knowledge of them all, and that's extremely unlikely. What actually happened, in short, was the feeling of allowing myself to be taken over, so to speak, to go into a transfixed state and allowing a spirit entity to uh, voice their opinion of exactly um, their experiences in the property. Well, it's termed transfiguration, and that is where, allegedly, a spirit or discarnate entity or ghost takes over the body of a medium or sensitive for a short while. I believe, personally, that last night, Derek believed that that was what was happening to him. But whether it really was is a matter of personal opinion. Well, it was pointed out quite clearly by Sam that provided the book was retrieved and what have you, which is still there, um, a lot of the... Um, the negative activity would cease forthwith. I personally don't buy into this story about the Jarmans killing people and constructing some awkward bed mechanism and dumping them in a vat of fat or boiling oil. It seems to me a lot of unnecessary hassle if you're going to murder somebody, surely just slit their throat. I think it's interesting Derek picked up on the information because the story is very much associated with the building. But whether that story is true or false is something different. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of our 24-hour stint, and I can safely say that each and every one of us has red eyes and we're feeling incredibly tired and grumpy. Join us on the next location. Until then, we're all going to bed, and if you are, sleep tight. Carl, please be careful. I was round that way. So, and, and it was, it was, it was like that. Right, physical I pull. Move, I didn't move this far. No. Okay. Well, it was a physical pull like that.